Hey, what's up? It's Shamari DeVoe, and you're checking out my boy, David Dwayne. This evening, we are going to be interviewing Shamari DeVoe from the group Black and the brand new show on BET Encore, where they are get, putting together a super group. If you guys have not checked it out on BET, you guys have to check out the brand new show. It actually comes on tonight at 10. So, yes, make sure that you guys tune into the show. Shamari will be joining us. If you guys got any question, make sure that you drop them below. But I'm doing great. How is everybody? Make sure you guys let me know what cities you guys are all hailing from. It's going to be a dope interview. It definitely is going to be. So any comments that you guys have, drop them down. Any questions, drop them down. Shamari is joining us right now. Shamari. Hi. <laughs> How are you, sweetie? I'm fine. How are you? I'm good. Look, this hair is giving me everything that I need today, oh, okay? Thank you. It's bright and colorful, just like me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> First of all, I want to say thank you for this interview today because, you know, a lot of the uh, fans, as soon as I posted about it on social, they were like so excited. They were like, oh my goodness, we love Black. We love Black. First of all, how did they not love Black? And I remember when you guys came out, I was six years old. Oh my God. Really? Yeah, so I'm good, a good old 28. So I'm writing my very spot where I was listening to y'all music. So it's definitely an honor today to be speaking with you. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Absolutely. Listen, congratulations on all this success with Black, you know, this brand new show on BT that I'm absolutely loving. It's absolutely hilarious just to see the different dynamics and personalities. <laughs> Let me ask you, before, as we get started with this interview, were you apprehensive about doing another reality show? Yes, of course. Uh -oh. I'm very apprehensive about doing another reality show. But um, I don't know if you know, but this was a show that has been in the making for like the past yes. six years. So this has I, been some years. I want It's almost been like like four or five years, just about right. Yeah, well, it, we shot the sizzle reel seven years ago. So this is before the housewives came about or anything. So um, just being a part of the original cast and then. It leaking during the pandemic, you know, that little viral scene with Keely and uh, <laughs> and Farah that went yeah. viral. So then BET picked it up. So it was like, you know, I've been sitting at home this whole entire pandemic. I haven't been doing anything. I haven't been using my voice. So you know what? Why not? Well, because I, I was just, you know, it was just at home like, like, like this. Like, oh, my God, I can't go anywhere. Like, there's this crazy virus out. So I was just really more so of a homebody. Um, yeah. It caused a little bit of anxiety and stuff. So, you know, when this opportunity came up, I was like, wow, this is perfect for me to get out, to use my God-given talents, my beautiful voice, and just let the world, you know, hear me again. So it was the perfect timing. Absolutely. So how could I and say I and I definitely want to shout out our boy, Ryan, who just dropped into the live. Amazing style is out of Atlanta. Oh, hey, Ryan. Yes. You hey. know what's crazy about me and Ryan? We have the same birthday. What? Stars <laughs> game. So, so like, I happy always say, um, like, happy birthday, birthday twin. Ryan, did I do good? Did I do good? Oh, give us the, stand up and give us the whole outfit, Shamari. I, I love oh, it. Oh, wait a minute. Yes. Hold on. I'm going to stand up on my oh. couch, okay? You like She's that? She's giving She's giving us legs today, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You are awesome. From that whole, you know, that clip going viral and stuff like that, Ryan said you look cute. Oh, thank you. And I see Troy. He's on, too. He's the one that did this amazing piece on my head. Thank First you. First of all, this, you and Troy with these different hairstyles, I've been peeping the story and I'm like, okay, what's what's given? Is that for a photo shoot that you guys did? No. Or you guys just like trying like, different looks? Yeah, just trying different looks. I love colors. I'm colorful. I, I was like, you know what? Let's make a bob. And he like put all these different colors in here looking like rainbow bright, you know, the pastels. And I love it. Thank you. And you could always have been about colors, especially with like the group's debut album with just like the colorful aesthetic and stuff like that so yes the bubble gum rap uh for our first album we all had on not bubble gum rap lord the bubble rap that mm -hmm. we had on during the first album that was natina's idea and you know we just ran with it and it was great like we've always been just fun youthful colorful futuristic of course how could we not be coming from left eye with a prototype right. 
guy from TLC. So, yes, yes, it's always been fun and colorful. But we all grown now. That's all right. <laughs> colorness, colorfulness in us, so. And it's, and it's so giving us a vibe. So let's go back to the, the point where, where the, the thought that you had said about just not using your voice during the pandemic. I know that you're, you know, that you're a mother, you're a wife, mm -hmm. you're a sister, you're a daughter, you're all many different things. Would you say that that was mainly your focus to why you didn't focus on like doing maybe solo music or any music with your husband at all? Yes. Um, just becoming a mother is a totally different just mindset. Like, it's it the focus is not only on you but it's on your children and so i just wanted to focus on being the best mom that i can be you know until they start school and <laughs> you know, being the best wife that i can be you know even though um it's hard i'm not even gonna lie I'm right a woman but even a super woman needs help you know <laughs> so, okay you know I, I literally did a panel earlier where i was telling people it was a music panel and i was literally saying if you think that you're going to get by being a one teen person in DYI and and until so you're blue in the face, right? You got another thought coming. You gonna need to break out and get your fan base, get your team going. <laughs> you know, get some help. It get takes your consumers. It takes a village. So, um, so yeah. So just really not singing. Um, it's really because I'm focusing on my family and, but at the same time, my husband is like beating me up. He's like, yo, your voice is just so dope. Why are you not singing? <laughs> yes. Why? Like, why are you not recording? Why are you not doing this? Um, but I am so ready to get out there, like working on my solo project, Ooh. fighting, producing, and of course, black, we're about to go back on the road again. So yes. yes, I'm not going anywhere. And this voice is here to say I'm here to just continue to use my God given talents. But yeah, um, another thing is, you know, my passion for music, I didn't touch on this, but you know, when you I lost left eye, you know, and she had a lot to do with our group. Yeah. Um, and losing her it was like wow who do we have now who's gonna actually come out who's gonna help us who's gonna really show up for us we didn't have that and then losing the tina man that was that was just like everything my heart my that heart. hurt so bad yeah so that had a lot to do with just me um you know losing my passion but you know i know that they both love my voice. Natina thought I was the best singer in the entire world. So, um, you know, just them looking down and seeing seeing that I'm still doing my thing is everything. Um, I sang the national anthem at the Hawks game last I night. I saw. Congrats. Yes. It was the vocals for me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you yes. did your thing. How, how was that feeling? Because, I mean, girl, you sing damn. But, like, how was that feeling to be able to, you know, have that opportunity? Man, it was amazing. Like I didn't realize how big it was. Like my husband is a sports fanatic. Um, and of course I'm from Atlanta, so I'm super happy that they are, you know, going to be the champions. I'm claiming that right now. Okay. Manifestation. <laughs> yeah. But it was I was nervous to be quite frank. Um, my zipper was down while I was performing. <laughs> And I didn't realize that I was so nervous and I was like midway through performance, I felt and I was like, uh oh, let me zip my zip my pants up. But um, yeah, it, I was nervous because it's like the national anthem is like one of those hard songs, but in a lot yes. of people's words and you and so many like celebrities or, or professional singers, they mess it up. <laughs> and I was like, no, I am not gonna be that one that's messing it up and everybody gonna be, you know, roasting me about not knowing the national anthem or not sounding right. So I made sure I went out there and I just gave it my all and um, I did it. <laughs> so. Let me tell you something. If I didn't have, go to military school out for high school, I would not even have learned the words my damn self. What? I would I would have been one of them ones been like, um, <laughs> Wait, what's that? <laughs> right. Yes, yes. So yeah, it was it was it was a great experience. Um, and I'm just I'm happy and blessed and honored to have been the chosen one for last night, and I killed it. <laughs> yes, you did. You sure did kill it. So I love the fact there's so many points that you mentioned. And I love how our our vibe is just going. We're just diving straight into a couple different points. So with keeping the legacy of Black alive, I know that y'all have been like very have heavy on that just you know doing tribute shows i mean go, still touring 
you know, prior to the pandemic, how important would you say that it's been for y'all to just keep the legacy going with Natina not being here, just keeping the importance of that girl empowerment? I mean, women empowerment to the forefront, even now with this new project. Yeah, it's so important. Women empowerment, like just lifting each other up. Like I am not Shamari DeVoe formerly of Black. I am Shamari DeVoe in Black. black. Our group mm -hmm. never up. We and that's on period. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we constantly record and we have a true sisterhood. And, um, you know, Natina was a major part of our group. She was like, just like the core that just like held it together. Like, she had so feisty, like she went all the way out to to New York and got us a record deal and sat down with the CEOs. Me and Brandy didn't even have to go out there. She just came back home to Atlanta. She was like, girls, I got you a record deal. I was like, what? You know, she was that yeah. good. Um, so, you know, it's important that we continue to keep her legacy alive. Like every single year, we celebrate Natina on her birthday, October 28th. We have a huge celebration and we talk about Natina. We invite lots of people out. We dance. We have a good time. We sing happy birthday. Um, you know, so we make sure that we constantly just talk about Natina, keep her memory alive. And even with Left Eye, um, we're constantly doing things with her. We just did an unveiling. Um, for her new um, monument where it's like, um, she got like this brand new headstone and this artist, mm. he, call him Cemetery Tim or something. He does like all types of different, like crazy. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, crazy different designs for um, monuments. So we just did that, you know, and I'm constantly just, you know, just giving back, you know, even with the Lisa Lopez Foundation. And, you know, when it comes to Natina, we collect coats for people that need, you know, coats and, and the, you know, homeless people and they need they need warm coats in the winter and we collect canned goods and all types of things. And we're just doing things in their name. And we're, we're in a Natina's son's life trend. He's so amazing. He's a dope artist. Oh, my God. Y'all got to check him oh, out. I got to check him out. Yes, he is. He's dope. You know, he got it honest from his dad and his mom. So, yes, and I'm close with I'm close with the Lopez's. I'm close with Natina's mom. And, you know, I'm just I'm just I'm, I'm that's my Natina's my sister. She's my best friend. Yeah. And, um, you know, I'm going to constantly do whatever it takes to make sure that people remember Natina because she is everything like her personality. She was know, so my inner Natina whenever I feel like I need, you know, confidence whenever I feel like yo I'm just not doing it right whenever I feel like yo I didn't hit that note right I hear Natina like yo you hit that note Mari you did that <laughs> you know she's constantly just like my cheerleader so no that's so amazing and I love seeing y'all and honey and then bring it on like that was such a moment can we talk about the nostalgicness of that movie I don't think people quite understood if they weren't born in the 80s or the 90s oh <laughs> Okay. Hey, buddy. <laughs> yeah. How, how was that time for you? You know, just being such a big film that that was. Man, in the '90s, it was crazy. The nostalgia, like you said, like it's just like the music just did something to you and for you. Like I can tell you exactly what I was doing, where I was, who I was dating when when Jodeci came out, you know, can I talk to you and just different things like that. And just being in that era, it just felt different. Like music was really real. Like it was we we talked about, right. it, you know, and um, and being a part of like Bring It On. Like that's the num that was the number one movie in America. And it still is like a cheerleading cult. Like it's the favorite. Like it's like to be a part of something so big and 20 years later um, to still be here and doing it is just a blessing. It's a blessing. Um, and then so. you see so many people like dress up in the clover outfit. It's it, like just the whole yeah. nostalgicness. And then the single bring it all to me, like within that same time period. So I was like, wait a minute, come on titles. What's I know. Right? Like, yes, exactly. Bring it all to me. And, a lot of people don't know, but when we were filming the movie, it was actually called Cheer Fever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was called Cheer Fever. We had shirts that said Cheer Fever, all types what? of like Cheer Fever. So I like to think that our song, Bring It All to Me, kind of influenced them to change the name. I'm going to say it did. 
<laughs> Listen, we gonna go with that, okay? Yeah, we gonna go with that. Because <laughs> I was like, what a coincidence in that time and that everything just rolled out. Not only that, but y'all had a bomb-ass rollout in that whole time. I mean, yeah. we see rollouts different, of course, now with social media. But we, I mean, the album came out at a time when there was no social media. The movie came out at a time when there's no social media. I'm Good With Honey then followed a time with no social media. I mean, there was Black Planet and everything else. Yeah. But... Yeah, MySpace. <laughs> yeah, MySpace. <laughs> the old MySpace. <laughs> yes, right, right. The old, oh, it still exists? Right. That's crazy how MySpace still exists. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> well, I mean, it still does, but nobody's on there. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I think I I think I reset my password maybe two years ago. Oh wow! Yeah. Yeah. So I'm so I'm still in there like swimwear, child. <laughs> yes, but no. I mean, it, it's it's just to be a part of just history. You know, um, it it just feels good. Like just to. Um, to just look back and, and think about, you know. Uh oh, what the heck? Somebody throwing something down the steps, threw me off. <laughs> I'm like the boys. Did y'all hear that? I heard. I was like, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> like, did somebody fall down the steps? <laughs> like, let it just be a toy that you threw. Please don't <laughs> fall. Toy, not your body and your head, baby. No, be like, Ronnie, get the boys. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so yeah, just, just being a part of history, you know, I, I don't, I would have never thought as, you know, I, I dreamed as a little girl, like I always wanted to be a famous singer when I grew up, that was what I wanted to be. But just all of the people that have come into my life, um, even my husband, like I would have never yeah. thought I'd marry the legendary <laughs> Ronnie <Right. DeVoe. laughs> And you guys have been in a relationship for what, 20, 20, yes. 21 years? Yes, for 20 years, we wow. have Wow, been... congratulations. Thank you. And we have been married 15 years. We celebrated our 15th wedding anniversary this year. And Congrats. Um, it doesn't, I don't even feel like it's been that long. Like, I don't, it's like when we met, I'm 41 now. Like, And that's like, what the whole thing is for me, girl. You don't even look 41. You the same I, age as my, my, my siblings. What? Yes. I mean, I don't know. I can't believe it. It's like, because when we met, I had just turned 21 when I met my husband and he was 33. So, I mean, now he's 50, how are you, 53 and I'm 41. Lord Jesus, time is going by fast. Lost, sis. But, but, you know, I mean, it's just, it's just been a blessing to be with someone that long to share, you know, the love and a life with someone, um, you know, of course, you know, you go through so many things, but you overcome those challenges. And, you know, like we call ourselves marriage ambassadors because we are, and we actually help other people. Right. Um, they help save their marriage and their families because we need our families to stay together because Ooh. our families make up the community. So yes. we have our families together. So me and my husband, we have made that our mission, along with our marriage coaches, Martez and Madrina, the founders of the Married for Life Walk. Okay. Yes. We do it every year. We're coming up on our fifth annual Married for Life Walk, where we have hundreds of couples come out, hold hands. And it's just a beautiful love celebration. No, that's amazing. And let me ask you something even, even a little bit more personal, too. With being married and still learning and discovering yourself, how would you say that marriage has helped you along the way you guys got married at a young age for you and stuff like that which yeah. ain't too young you know i want to say that because i know they might think i'm saying that in a bad way but right. i mean to you know go through your 20s and then now to be in your to be 40 and be with the same person like that's you learn a lot along the way about each other yeah. and yourself yeah you just learn you learn patience you learn how to forgive <laughs> mm, come on now <laughs> yes, gotta, because if you don't forgive, then there's no point because there's a lot of mistakes that are made in life, okay? So you right. got to learn how to forgive. You got to learn patience and um, you got to learn how to listen. I learned, you know, how to do active listening, like listen 
to each other. Listening is like one of the greatest gifts you can give anybody. Like, you know, a lot of people are so quick to just talk, 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 talk. But like, how about listening? And, and tell me, repeat back to me what I just said so I know that you're listening and not just waiting to fire back at me. You know what exactly. I'm saying? Exactly. Because well, then you, that shows real communication skills yes. versus like, oh, let me just respond to respond. Let me actually listen and read the room to what, what's happening here so that we can better each other in, as a whole. Yes, yes, exactly. So yeah, you definitely learn a lot. And um, <laughs> it's just, it's a life learning experience. But you know, um, you you also grow closer and you your love, yeah. like, your love just keeps growing and it keeps getting stronger and stronger. And that's a beautiful thing, you know? <laughs> I love it. Yes, Mrs. DeVoe, we love it all. I want to talk about the debut album again, because y'all had some songs. Okay. That I absolutely love. 808 was definitely one of my favorites, and I do. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about just recording that album overall, getting into the studio. Did you guys record the album prior to getting the deal, or did you guys get the deal first? What was the whole judge of that project? So we got the deal in 97, Tommy Matola, Sony Music. Um, we started recording in 97. I was 17. Um, we recorded for two years. <laughs> Ooh. See, they don't even record for two years no more. They just be like, no, right. They just get it out, out. But it's, it was so different back then. So, you know, we actually, during the recording process, we didn't use keyboards and things like that. We actually had a live band and a live mm -hmm. orchestra come in the studio and play real live music, you know, back then. So that was like artist development on a whole different level. Yes, yes, exactly. Um, so yeah, we took our time and we, and you know, we made sure that everything was right. So the album, um, came out in 99 so two years later our first single like you said you're one of your favorite songs 808 mm -hmm. <laughs> written and I look i had i even had the album on the cassette tape you did show sure enough but you only, you're not even old enough okay girl 93 what you mean <laughs> Wait, oh you was born in 93 okay <laughs> listen i gotta let them know don't let this skin fool you <laughs> i know you look super young Wait, thank are you, a you. huh are you considered to be a millennial? You know what? I looked it up, and I don't think necessarily it is a millennial, but I call myself the throwback millennial. Oh. Because I feel like I was born in the 80s. Because oh, I, yes. so, I know so much of that time and of the 90s. Right, you know, right. Especially when you do your research and actually are really in the trenches of this business. It's like, you got to do your homework for real. Yes, you do. Like, I'm telling you, I was shocked to find out I was a millennial. I was like, what? Right. I was like, wait, what's that? I don't want to be called that. <laughs> I'm like the oldest of the millennials, though. <laughs> the very last. 1980. That's the, that's the very beginning of the millennial. <laughs> right. My brother and sister are 81. Oh, okay. Yeah. But so yes, yeah, so. R. Kelly, he wrote and produced 808, and um, that was a cool experience, just working with him as teenagers. Um, right. So we, um, he didn't like recording until midnight, so I don't know why, but we, we, <laughs> we started recording at midnight, and we went in there, and he had to pep talk me because I was so tired. I was like, man, I'm tired. He came in there. He was like, yo. He was like, I haven't slept in two days, man. Come on, you got this. You got to do this. So he was giving me a pep talk. So I went in there. Her, she's got a nine to five, and just you know what I'm saying. Well, coming in after twelve, yes. And I was like, okay, cool. And I was like, but I don't want because the original words was, um, I know you're tired of her lies. Just let her go. What the hell? And I didn't want to hell. I didn't yeah. Wanna so they was like, okay, just say deal. So I was like, just let her go, what the deal? So, you know, just little things like that people don't really know. <laughs> yeah. So, right. So that was cool. And then also Candy, um, you know, from Escape, she did the remix right. to 808. So that's another cool little fact. Um, Candy's super dope. Love her to Love death. Love Candy. It's super talented. Um, what did you learn from working with Candy, especially for, like the the nostalgicness of what Escape was before, you know, there was um, even TLC and Destiny Child and then your group as well? Yeah, I mean, I just learned that she's super dope. Like, like her, like, just the, her vocal producing, like, 
she brung vocals out of me that I didn't even know that I had. Like right. working with, me. like, um, you know, and and she just she's just super creative. And she knows her stuff, and she she is very 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 serious about her craft. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes, in yeah. every project, and I don't think they give her enough credit for as dope as she is. Yes, she is super dope, man. Um, so yeah, working with Candy was was awesome, and um, yeah. So, I do your other favorite record. Yeah, Tina, Tina Reed actually wrote that. Um, rest in peace. She wrote that song, and um, I love that song. It was super dope. Pop. It's the message for me. You yes. know what I'm saying? It's so beautiful. Yeah, and also like back then videos. Oh goodness, that thunder! You hear that? Oh, I heard that. Where you at? I'm up north. I, look, I just came back from Miami. I wish my ass. Listen, it was raining in Miami, so I was like, let me take my ass back up north. Now it was thundering and yes, it's thundering too. Um, but yeah, so just like back then, you know, when we shot that video, um, we spent they spent millions on videos, like oh, videos yeah. super different and just. We we spent three days shooting the video, so I do was like this super. Ooh, <laughs> <laughs> <Did> you... <laughs> damn! You might Ooh. wanna disconnect when you get electrocuted over Come there. On. <laughs> Jesus, let it pass. Let it pass. Let it pass. Because we That's he's having a good happened. moment right now. We don't need no power going out. Yes, but yes, so. Yes, yes, yes. Black, 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 but black, black. Yes. I, I, I love the group, and I still do. So tell me this. Now, with knowing what you know from Black and to getting into this super group with these different women and learning these different personalities, what was your in natural feeling, like, overall? Like, I know I know you were, like, going ho about the, you know, the initial lineup that there was with the sizzle. But how was it just learning all these different personalities? We got Aubrey, Danny, DeCain. We know what DK has done. <laughs> what? It's pass. Man, that's... Pass, beloved. Pass. <laughs> it said pass, beloved. <laughs> <laughs> and then Nivea, who's not been in a group. And then 702, another group. Uh, the ladies of 702 as well. Another group in the 90s as well, too. Yeah. Um, you know, just coming from a group, black you know there's three members and i know like the dramas and all of that that goes with um that goes with being in a girl group so going into the house i knew that you know there would be drama but i was super excited just to be a part of something with these legends like Pam right. total like nivia that's my girl we straight from atl like together even though she hasn't been in a girl group, just the fact that she was even there and willing to try it out, you know. Yeah, that's just... it was a lot of ATL flavor. And you guys filmed it in Atlanta, too. Yeah, we filmed it in Atlanta, 30 days in a house with Woo! nine men and all these different strong personalities and, you know, a lot of passion, you know. Um, it was, it was, it was, ba it was, I'm glad that I have the experience of being in a girl group because I know that when you have so many different opinions and so many different personalities, you're going to clash and, and, um, you know, people that really want to be heard, yes. um, who feel like, you know, they're not being heard. It's, it's hard as an artist, you know, when you can't really express yourself, but it's also, um, when you have producers in the house, like Fallon and Felicia, um, they're dope, like writers. Yes. Oh, and then co-signed and then Elijah Blake. And co-signed Elijah Blake. And, you know, they know how they want their stuff to sound. So you can't do nothing but respect that, you know. And I was there to sing. I was there to use my voice, not lose my voice. Okay. So I'm an unconfrontational person. But, you know, somebody comes step to me, you know, I'm going to let them have it. Right. Because we got to defend for ourselves. <laughs> At the same time, it's like. You know, I was just super happy to be a part of something where, you know, we can form a sisterhood and empower each other to do better and to and to grow, you know, vocally and just to create something that has never been done before. A super group, you know, right. nine of, nobody's ever been, in, in, you know, in a nine. No, group. they haven't They're, done uh, 
super groups in a minute. It's been no a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and not in especially not with females at all. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, not with females either, you know. So you know, my thing was just getting back out there and um, letting my light shine however I can bonding with females forming a sisterhood. That's amazing. Um, so um, this was just the perfect opportunity to make a comeback for yes. you know a lot of people. <laughs> and I would say not a comeback for you because you've been consistent. We saw you in the last show and stuff like that too. But I love the fact that we're seeing you on this show with women and just empowerment. How did you feel about just the editing of this show? Well, so um, far? You know, that's one of the things that, you know, you cannot, you do not have control over the editing. That is Correct. totally the... the you know, production. So, you know, people, they can't edit what you don't say. So whatever was said was said and whatever was done was done. And, you know, I learned that from reality TV. Like I've been on the housewives, so I know how they can edit you and make you look like something that you're not. Um, you know, they edit me to make me look like, you know, I'm just this person that just loves to drink and this, that, and the third. And that's not true because... Right. <laughs> Frankly, I am only drinking socially and they don't put that in there. Like also, you know, there's a balance in life, you know, there's a balance. But, you know, of course, when it's reality TV, they're not going to show you the balance. They're not going to show you the good and the bad all the time. They're going to show you more of like, you know, the, the raw. Stuff. Right. They're going to get they're going to give you the exact key points to yes. keep the audience captured Watch, in watching. Exactly. Yeah. So yes, everything you see is real. Everything that was said was said. Um, and you guys are in for a treat because it's coming on tonight. It is. Less than 30 minutes. Yes. Woo. Yes. In like almost, you know, 20, 24 minutes or whatever it is. Yes. It's on BET. BET presents the encore. It's going to be some drama. So y'all got to keep watching. And I'm glad that y'all are loving it. But um it's it's it was just it was a great experience and i'm super glad that you guys are loving it and i can't wait for the outcome oh i can't but i'm looking forward to seeing this show like i've been we're on what episode four now right yes this is episode four tonight Ooh. we will be watching it right along with all of you we don't get to preview the episodes before or anything so i will be finding out things and all the edits and all of right. that but, <laughs> right i can't wait to see you. it so do you, so do you so do you have an idea for what all this episode is going to show and can you give us like something that we can look forward to with this particular one? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I should have I should have said without giving too much. That sh that was should have been my disclaimer. <laughs> just just um just just get ready. Get ready. It's 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 going to be a ride, y'all. Are we laying the are we laying the vocals down 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 this week is what I want to know. I don't know. <sighs> you got to wait and see. Like I said, you got to look, look. I'll be right here. It's 20 minutes. You about to see it. <laughs> 20 minutes. I'm going to be right here. Let me ask you too getting into the process of recording with these personalities, it's like that, how was that just learning everybody and just having to be in a group since it's been a while since you've recorded a group album? Yeah, Um. oh, that was cool. Just learning everybody's vocal ability and, you know, seeing and hearing it. Um, I was happy and I was shocked and, you know, <laughs> um, but it was cool because at the end of the day, um, it's all about growing and, you know, helping each other and rooting each other on. Um, so just learning that th there's, there's a whole lot of talent in the house and, you know, what one person is not good at, they're good at something else. Like, you know, they may not be the best vocalist, but they can dance or, you know, they can write or, you know, they may sing their butt off, but they can't dance. So right. everybody got something to give to the group and I love seeing that dynamic with all of us. Yeah, I love seeing that dynamic too. And y'all have so much personality. Yes. So much. <laughs> <laughs> I don't look, I can't miss the shows like that but I forget who I was talking to. I was talking to a friend and she was like, should I watch the show? I said, well, that's up to you if you want to watch it. I personally love the show and everybody that's on it. So look, yeah. to each oh. their own but it's a, it's a great show. 
Yes. And I'm looking forward to this album that you guys do. I'm I'm, first of all, I'm looking forward. Oh, I can't say that the music is the bomb. The music is everything. Wait till y'all hear it. Oh my god, it's incredible. And y'all already picked up, like, picked the group name too, right? All of that. Yeah, yeah we did. Woo. I can't wait to know what that name is. Yes, and I can't wait for y'all to hear it. <laughs> now, with the, now with the group, are you guys planning to maybe even do some shows as well, or are you just kind of waiting to see what the response of the show and the in the music? Oh. Yeah. So I mean, we are totally wait you. We are totally down to just keep this thing going. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's not just for show. <laughs> it's really not. So yeah. No, that's but, good. Can't wait for y'all to hear and see everything. I can't wait either. You know what I wanted to also ask you? Just about girl groups as a whole and, and just in groups. Do you feel like the groups will make a comeback or duos or trios? Because we, we definitely don't have a whole bunch in the mainstream world. We have, we more so have it in like pop world and we have it on the indie side, but we don't have it in the mainstream world. Yes, yes, they have to. They have to make a comeback. They do. Because just imagine like, all of these tours that were going on before the pandemic, it was nothing but like 90s groups. Like people want to see groups. It was like SWV. There was, you know, um, Silk and BBD, mm -hmm. you know, two and New Black. Edition, yup. Escape. So all these groups that people want to see. So yes, they're definitely coming back. Definitely. They're going to make a comeback in mainstream. Um, and it could be... <laughs> From BET presents the encore. You never know. Okay. <laughs> the group from BET presents the encore. <laughs> we speaking that into existence right there. And how uh, do you also feel about R and B music as well? Just like how the dynamic has changed. Like there's different subgenres. Just like how there always has been. How do you feel about R and B today? Um. Yeah. <laughs> you, might you, you can you can be honest with us, Shamari. We we but friends I'm, now. <laughs> R and B B lover. I'm just gonna put it that way. I I love the '90s. I call it's, me stuck in the past. It, it's baby, the '90s for you. Yes, and Babyface is still my favorite producer to Ooh, this. Ooh, yes. But um, no, the music. They, I mean, there's a lot of dope songs out today. Um, R and B music. Um, so. I feel like some people get it and some people don't. Some artists get it and some artists don't. Um, right. I feel you on that. Which artists do you love that are still making music from either the 80s, the 90s, or the early 2000s, or even prior to that time? Artists that I love that are still making music? Yes. From time? Um, Beyonce. Beyonce. <laughs> Yonce, y'all on his mouth like Beyonce, liquor. Hey, <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. She's still making music. I love I love Beyonce. I really do. She's super talented and super sweet. Yeah. Have you been able to get into like to her and Gideon and like SZA? Any yeah, a little, a little something, something. Yeah. But you like, look, it, it's it's the classics for me. It's the classics. I'm just I'm just a classic type of gal. I think, right. what do you feel like this new generation of R&B is more so missing than anything that doesn't quite capture your attention? Um, I think I just love the love songs. Mm -hmm. like, like, the real, like, um, you know, I just, I just want to start a family with you and have children and marry you and, you know, and just spend the rest of my life with you type music. Like, right. Like, that you know what true I'm happy essence. The true, like, just, yeah, happy. Just, you know what I'm saying? And, like, just get on the dance floor and tell the DJ to play that song and grab a drink. You know, like, just right. run. Ticket. You know, that type of just just real, just, like, songs that I can relate to. Or, uh, or a lot of people, you know? Yeah. Because it was a lot of songs that we can relate to back in the day, for sure. Oh, yes, 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 I'm telling you. Somebody said even records that was like, girl, fuck that nigga. Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> what they say, let's do some some ratchet shit. Oh, no. I don't know about all of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord, I don't even see it. Okay, yeah. So, look, sometimes those comments ain't need to be said. Oh, they. Oh, somebody said you and Nibia need to do a song together. 
Yes, I would love to do a song with Nivea. Her voice is so dope. Her tone is everything. She got that raspiness. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I just love her personality. She's super funny. Me and Nivea were roommates in the house, and she kept me laughing all day, every day. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Amazing. And I know it, it's almost time for the show and stuff like that. So I, I want, somebody said they want you to sing. Oh, Lord. They said, I want you to sing if it was for me. Oh, my God, Draco. <laughs> <laughs> Draco, that's my brother right there. Oh what up, Draco? If it was me under the tree. I forgot the words, Lord. See, you're going to have your sister embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> he tried, though. He definitely did. So I okay. want to ask you, as far as the mother, the sister, the friend that you are, the wife, what comes to mind when we think about what exemplifies you as all those amazing things that you are? I. What comes to mind? Yeah. I'm a superwoman. <laughs> <laughs> I I um I am a mother. I am a wife. I am a friend, a sister. I am genuine. I am loving. I am positive. Um I I I I give. Um so you know, just like my my family is everything to me. Um my kids, my husband. <laughs> Um, so yeah, to know me is to love me, you know? Okay. And that's on that. I I love the answer, your answer on that. To love me yeah. is to know me. And I think that there's so much strongness in that word, those words. Yeah. I don't think a lot of people read between the lines when people say that. Right, exactly. No, that's beautiful. And then when you think about the amazing legacy of Michael Jackson and Prince, and what they left this world and what they're still continuing to empower not being here. What comes to mind and what are some of your favorite records by them? Oh, oh my God. Um, uh, what is that song? Um, um, Stop the love, you say my fear. Oh, darling, take it slow. Someday you'll be all alone. Yes, I love that song. Uh-huh, and Prince. What's the Prince song? Um, um, Purple Rain. Yes. Was, wait, was that Ronnie singing in the background? No, nah, this is this lady over here. Oh. Hey. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was like, come on, vocals. <laughs> oh, yeah, she could sing. Would you say Purple Rain for you, though? Yeah, Purple Rain, baby. That, that's that, that song right there. And, um, um, What's the other song? Um, oh, 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 what is the song? Why, why you got me thinking? You know, I got mommy brain. <laughs> What's the other song? Um, oh, man, he got so many hits. Do me, baby. Yes. Yes. My voice is a little hoarse, y'all. Sorry. I screamed the national anthem last night. So forgive Girl, me. You, I you, you gave everything. You don't, you, you don't owe us too many vocals right now. You, you good. <laughs> Thank you. No, but when but when you think about them, like what comes to mind? As oh, well? what, yeah. You. Oh my God. Um, shoot, just the 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 best that ever did it. Like Michael Jackson, um, super talented. I'm so inspired by him and his his music and his passion and his voice. And and just knowing his work ethic, like that right there, just how, how hard he worked and how he made sure it was right to like, you know, his dance moves, it was perfect. Like he did not leave <laughs> the vocal booth. He did not leave the rehearsal right. until it was perfect. Like just team no sleep. Like that right there just shows how, you know, when you work so hard, um, yeah, how successful you are. So um, yeah how much you can succeed just by doing that um so yeah yeah i love them they were so phenomenal and they ain't leave no crumbs on the floor for anybody <laughs> they didn't they didn't <laughs> <laughs> well shamari it was so great chatting with you i appreciate this conversation everybody was loving the interview it's like they, they were common they were active with us i want to see if we got one question in here before i let you go nope 
But one question somebody did want to know is, how soon are you two starting recording the new Black project and then your project, and then how can they submit records? Oh, okay. Well, you can submit records to my... First of all, you should DM me, okay? And then I can give you the email address where you can submit your records to, okay? So just DM me. Um, and I am working, like, tomorrow. Like, oh, seriously. Okay, yes. I have in my house like all this time i have a studio right i was going to ask you if y'all have a yeah. studio in the house yes we do and that's what i'm saying it's so easy for me to just go down there i just need an engineer because i don't know how to engineer but at least right. you know engineer i might have to call her, be like girl catch, catch your flight from la right like come <laughs> over i know you know how to vocal produce and everything i love yeah. those girls so um so yeah so um definitely i was talking to my girl mika last night dope writer she's ready to start working and you know there's so many producers and writers just come on over to the house and let's work i'm ready now so yes i got to use this voice baby that's right you got to use that voice and shamari we're looking so forward to seeing tonight's episode of the encore it comes on in nine minutes and we're yeah. looking forward to these projects first of all again congratulations on everything that you've been doing and thank you for this conversation we had a blast chatting with you this evening oh thank you i really enjoyed it thank you so much anytime you are... thank you so much look it's it's an honor to hear that from you of all people like i said i grew <laughs> up I, I grew up listening to y'all i still listen to 808 oh yeah oh wait jc chaze on bring it all to me that version what was oh. going through your mind when that was secured because i would have been gagging well you know actually we know them personally because we had the same manager johnny wright right so he would be Shout hanging out, out the the time our first major tour was with in sync mm -hmm. this is before we even had a single on the radio so so that right there that was all in the management you know getting him on there i was like yes 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 because originally it was going to be justin but he couldn't <sighs> do it so, so then JC did it, but JC tore it up. He talking about them Tims and them baggy jeans, baby. He right. Ju Wait a minute, but Justin was going to be on there? Yeah. Has this ever been said on record? No. What? It's just a little, a little inside scoop. <laughs> well, damn. <laughs> Justin, yeah. where you at? I still, I still want to hear it. <laughs> I know, right? But then, um, so I had to re-record it because uh, JC wasn't available to, to shoot the video with us. Okay. So I had to go record it and do his part. <laughs> so that's why you hear two different versions sometimes. Listen, but we love both versions, okay? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that's, that's, listen, that's some iconic shit that a lot of these folks can't say that they, that they did. Right. Like exactly. JC from NSYNC, like, do y'all hear who's watching this understand, like, who NSYNC is? They, no, they don't. No, they don't. I'm not even going to ask them if they do. <laughs> they don't even know. I just said, they remember that tour. I saw somebody in the comments. They remember the tour we were on with NSYNC. Yeah, that was such a good tour. But all right, Shamari, let everybody know where they can follow you as far as social media is concerned as yes. well, too. You can follow me at Shamari DeVoe on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all social media platforms at Shamari DeVoe. Okay. <laughs> Make sure y'all follow her. These amazing projects are coming. 